Well, Chris is with us now from Jerusalem to talk about Turkey's threat. And Chris, what have you learned inside of Turkey uh, that's causing this aggression? Well, Pat, I think uh, some see Erdogan in his uh, trying to restore the lost honor from the defeat of the Ottoman Empire after World War I. You know, Pat, for 450 years, Turkey was the defender of Islam. And Istanbul, not Mecca or Medina, was the seat of Islam. For example, on TV, I've been hearing from some of my Turkish friends that on TV, the glory of the Ottoman Empire is being broadcast. And they controlled Jerusalem for 400 years. And that's why in our report, he would say Jerusalem is ours. It was there for 400 years until 1917 when British General Allenby walked through the Jaffa Gate, actually not too far from behind me right now. So behind much of this aggression is a matter of restoring the glory that's been lost. Well, what is going on inside of Turkey that we don't get much attention to on the news? Well, you know, uh, Pat, Erdogan controls all the branches of government. He controls the judiciary, the military, even the media. You know, it's a NATO member, but it's actually destroyed democracy there in the last past 10 or 15 years. For example, after the coup in 2016, he jailed or removed 150,000 government officials. And then in 2017, he has the presidential system that allows him to be president for life. Take journalists, more journalists in jail in Turkey than any other country in the world. Some of those uh, in jail right now are 60 Kurdish mayors that are in eastern Turkey. There's little or no freedom of speech. There is an opposition group, but they're afraid of speaking up. They've also, Pat, been the main enabler and supporter of Hamas. Hamas there in Turkey lives in mansions. They're on it inside the country. And this is a group that's dedicated to destroying Israel. And that's who Erdogan's allying himself with. So that's some of what's going on inside Turkey that the world's really not noticing. Well, Chris, what about uh, working with Iran? I mean, one Sunni, the other Shia, does it make any difference? You know, even though they're Sunni and Shiite, uh, you know, they're kind of aligned together right now. And that was what Seth Fransman said in our report. They had an important meeting in June of their foreign ministers. You know, what pulls them together, they both oppose U.S. policies in the Middle East, like the U.S. role in Iran. Iran supports Turkey's role in Libya. And Iran is also using Turkey to avoid the U.S. sanctions and the arms embargo. So that, this is where they're lying themselves away. They both support Hamas, and they're both fighting the Kurdish groups in the region. And Turkey is actually working with the Iranian Revolutionary Guards to do this. This is a group that the U.S. identifies as a terrorist group. Now, what thing brings them together as well, Pat, is they share a hatred of Israel, and they both have their eyes on Jerusalem. They both support the Palestinians, and they're calling on the Islamic Ummah, you know, this global Muslim community, to defend Jerusalem. So you can see, even if they are Sunni and Shiite, they have a lot in common, and they're working together. Uh, have you got a, a take on what do you think Turkey's next move is going to be? Well, Pat, I would look to two things. First, look to the Caucasus and the Eastern Mediterranean as well. In the Caucasus, Erdogan wants Turkish peacekeepers to monitor the end of the war between Armenia and Azerbaijan that ended a couple of weeks ago. That's after he helped Azerbaijan actually win the war. So two days ago, the Turkish government just ratified that. So for Armenians, it's very ominous development because they remember the Armenian genocide back in 2015. In the Eastern Mediterranean, he's continuing to push for those drilling rights. And if you looked at that map, Pap, it's, it's almost comical because you have Turkey here, you have Libya here. So what he's done is have an agreement between the two. And basically, he's got this huge swath of the Eastern Mediterranean that he's claiming for his own. So that butts himself against Greece that has its own uh, position on those, uh, on those rights, as well as Israel that wants to have a tunnel through there, a, 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 a line. gas line through there. So those are the two places. I would look at the Caucasus and I would look at the Eastern Mediterranean. And furthermore, he's actually defying a ceasefire that the UN had in Libya. He's not removing his Turkish troops that he was supposed to. So in, in some, uh, uh, Pat, he continues to defy the UN, the EU, and NATO, and he's getting away with it. Well, he won't get away for long. Uh, Chris, thank you for that insightful report. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, that you that you've got to look at your Bible now, because here is the story. I think Ezekiel 38 is getting ready to, to take place, and uh, here's what Ezekiel had to say. 
uh, he said, uh, the sovereign Lord says, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you out with your whole army, your horses and horsemen fully armed, a great horde with large uh, and small shields, all of them brandishing swords. Persia, Cush, and Put will be with them, all with shields and helmets. Gomer and his truth, and Beth to Gomer from the far north with all its truth, the many nations with you. Now, here's the deal. Uh, the Bible says that this is going to happen. What's the uh, alliance is going to be? It's going to be Turkey. Uh, it's going to be Libya. That's Put. Uh, it's going to be Cush. That, that is the uh, upper Sudan. It's not Ethiopia. It, it just says that. That's, that's incorrect. It's It's... Uh, Cush is is uh, uh, North Sudan. Now, the Bible says that the you know they talk about the El Aksa. Aksa is 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 the far point, and Muhammad claimed he had a dream, and he said I was on a horse, and I flew on the horse, and his foot touched down into. El Aqsa, the farthest place, which is Jerusalem. And of course, Aisha, his favorite wife, said, well, he may have had a dream of going on a horse, but he was still in bed with me all night long. <laughs> but nevertheless, that's what they claim. El Aqsa is, is the far point, and the El Aqsa Mosque is considered a separate holy place by the uh, Muslims. Now. Ezekiel says, these things are going to happen in the latter days, I'm going to call you. But here's, here's what's got to happen. Israel has got to be at peace. They've just signed the Abraham Accords uh, with, the, uh, with Bahrain and, and uh, the Emirates. And it also says that when this happens, uh, the people are going to stand aside and say, what are you doing? Well, it's going to be down in, in Saudi Arabia, which will probably make a deal with, uh, with the Israel. And uh, it's going to be the young lions of Tarshish. And the only place in the Bible I have ever been able to find America is right there. Because, you know, they found that language called Ugam, which was the, the markings on the stones. And they were up in Davenport, Iowa, and they found a stone that says travelers from Tarshish came here too. Tarshish is the land beyond the Gibraltar, and England was probably considered Tarshish, and, and we in America are the young lines of Tarshish. So we're going to stand aside, and we're going to say, what are you doing? And uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, and, and uh, down in, in the southern parts of Saudi Arabia, uh, Sheba and Dedan, they're going to say to the Turks, what are you doing? But apparently it doesn't take them to stop it. And this is, this is going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, the, the Bible says, after many days you will be called to arms. In the future years you will invade a land that has recovered from war, whose people were gathered from the many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had been desolate, which had been brought out from the nations, and now all of them live in safety. And you and all your troops and the many nations with you will go up advancing like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land. So it's going to be the, the Muslim uh, uh, countries in the south part of, uh, of Russia, like Azerbaijan and so forth. It's going to be Turkey. It's going to be uh, Kush. It's going to be uh, North Sudan. And um, it's going to be, well, there they are. Mo um, and, Magog, Gomer, and Tuber, and uh, but uh, there, Cush is is, is, Su is Sudan, uh, and and there was some thought that North uh, Sudan was going to make a deal uh, to recognize Israel. It's not going to happen, and so they're going to invade a country. And is that coming soon? Well, I think it will. I tell you why, because uh, if we are the young lions of Tarshish. We are right now in a, a sort of interregnum. We've got two presidents. Uh, we have uh, some confusion at the head of our uh, military. And uh, uh, Turkey is now so aggressive. But this is what's going to happen. I will invade a land of unwalled village. 
I will attack a peaceful and unsuspecting people, all of them living without walls and without gates and bars. It's going to happen. Now watch your papers. I think it's the next thing prophetically that's going to take place, and Turkey's going to be at the lead. Gog and Magog, that stuff is right in Turkey. And um, the, the Iranians, it will be Persia, will be lined up with them, as was said. Some of the Muslim uh, uh, territories, like Azerbaijan, to the south of Russia, it's all going to be there. And, uh, of course, they, they, they've got Libya in, but Libya doesn't account for a whole lot right now, except that they're lined up with Turkey to, to um, run a pipeline across the uh, Mediterranean. But uh, there it all is, and it's getting ready to happen. So keep your eyes open. Prophecy is getting ready to happen before your very eyes. Terry. It's amazing watching things all move but, and but transition. It's all ready. I mean, it's all set. And when would be the best time for, for somebody like Erdogan to move? When the United States, which yeah. is the young line of Tarshish, we're not going to be able to stop them. Our, our uh, Defense Department is, is lacking in leadership. Uh, I mean, they don't have leaders. They, they're not there. And the president is, is fighting for his life against, uh, you know, Biden and so forth. I mean, if Erdogan is a smart tactician, he'll say, this is the time I can go after Israel. He seems to be moving forward. Well, exactly. He's not going to wait. He, you know, folks, it's going to happen. You heard it here on the 700 Club. And it's like in your, you read your paper, you read your Bible, and there it all is coming.